Oslo, exploring Oslo Bukta, this uh, new neighborhood right by the Opera House and the new Munch Museum. And this is actually the oldest part of Oslo. This is where the Viking kings used to live. Yeah, so you had a, a house here? You're pretty old, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe my grandfather did. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So there's four different parts of Oslo Bukta? Yes, and right now we're sitting in Munkbrygge. And that's named for the new Munch Museum that's right here? Correct. And all the way in the back you have barcode. And that's because the tall buildings look like a barcode next to each other? That's the idea, yeah. And it's sort of the financial business district of Oslo. And then you have Sørenga, which is where Oslo people go swimming in the summer. Yeah, so it's like uh, the Los Angeles of Oslo. I guess you could say that. I'll, fi I'll feel right at home. You will. Uh, and the last district right behind Munkbrygge is Bispevika. I think I know what's opening there. Something exciting. It's the new Maimo? Yep, opening soon. We are kicking things off with a food crawl. It's our favorite way to explore a new place, especially when we have a limited time and try as much as possible. So Anders is gonna show me some of his favorite spots. Exactly, I'm gonna take you to a burger place, a ramen place. This, this area has a little bit of everything. Perfect. Yeah. And then tomorrow? Tomorrow we'll sit down and experience the full meals at a couple of places. We'll have lunch at uh, Brasserie Rivoli, which is actually right behind us here. And new then, place. Uh, yeah, it's a new place. And then we'll end up at uh, Code for dinner. Yum. So the first stop on our Oslo Bukta food crawl today is breakfast at Gott Brød. As you can probably guess from the name, it means good bread. They have that here and lots of traditional Norwegian pastries. So we had to try a few. This one is Anders' favorite from when he was little. It's called a skolabola, school bun, which has coconut and cream in a bun. We also have mandelbola, which means almond bun, which also has cream and almonds on top. Of course, we got some coffee, beautiful outdoor space here. So cozy, so Scandinavian, so hygge. That's good. Look at the almond cream inside there. Mm. This one's my favorite. Going just around the corner for stop number two of our food crawl, it's ramen time. Going to check out Koya Ramen's second location here in Munk Brugge. My name is Tim. I'm the owner and chef at Koya Ramen. Uh, we opened in 2017 um, at Togata. This is the second location, Munk, which opened in January. So we make three different types of noodles. Uh, we make a Hakata noodle, a Tokyo noodle, and a Sapporo noodle. The Hakata noodle is a hard noodle, um, so it absorbs less of the broth. Um, we have that with uh, tonkotsu. Um, we also do the Tokyo noodle, that's for the lighter broths, the shio and the shoyu. Um, that's a bouncier noodle, the more typical sort of ramen noodle. And the Sapporo, which is the really high water content noodle, very fat, very juicy noodle. So we uh, use uh, local suppliers wherever we can. All our meat comes from Anis. All our chicken from the, for the Karagi and for all the stocks comes from Hold the Guard. Um, I use, uh, in the ramen, I blend three different types of flour. Um, so I use um, local Norwegian whole wheat flour, Japanese uh, kotobuki flour, and some Italian type zero zero flour. We got two different types of ramen. We have a mazumen ramen, which is a dry, just a little bit of broth with these noodles. And then we have a tantanmen ramen, which is based on a tonkatsu broth, really rich pork in there. And of course we have to get some chicken karage on the side. That is a Koya ramen specialty.
We're heading over to Suringa for the next two stops on our food crawl. First, we're gonna get a burger because it's not a food crawl without a burger. Then we'll finish up with some gelato. Life's short, gotta have dessert. Working out my buns before we get some buns. Buns, buns, buns. We're here at Buns Burgers. I've never tried this place before, but it ranked pretty high for Anders when he did his also burger test of all the best burgers in town. But you know, I'm the burger expert, so I gotta come in here and try it for myself. Look at this monster of a burger. We got the cheeseburger, but we topped ours with caramelized onions because, of course, caramelized onions are better. This one comes with the buns special sauce, cheese, some salad. This guy is juicy. Here we go. Carnivore fruit. Dessert time, we're here at Paradis Gelateria and we have the nocciola and pistachio gelato. This is uh, hazelnuts and pistachio. Can't wait to try it. Andrews, how fast can you eat this gelato cone? It's about a challenge. Challenge. It's our second day exploring Oslo Bukta and we're starting with lunch at Brasserie Rivoli. This new restaurant is French but they use Norwegian ingredients so they have classic dishes on the menu like beef tartare but today they also have a seasonal scry fish which is a local codfish from Norway. I think it's super cool that they have a female head chef here. Her name is Kari Inera. She used to run restaurant BA53 in Frogner but when she had the opportunity to move down to this exciting new neighborhood she took it. She's located literally right next to the new Monk Museum right along the waterfront where the river meets the fjord. It's an amazing location and this is a beautiful restaurant. This is hand peeled shrimps with some uh, crab meat, mayonnaise and lemon juice, some dill, pepperot and uh, chopped red onions. And we're gonna serve it on top of a grilled brioche with some salad.
for our last meal here in Oslo Bukta, we're going to restaurant Code, which is the new playground of chef Krista Rødset. Jeg heter Kristi Rødset, jeg er medeier her på Code, og kjøkkensjef Vågals, som er rett borte i gata her. Code er et konsept som er, vi sier at det er sånn bistro-brasseri-stil. Leken brasseri var på en måte det vi jobbet med da vi skulle åpne. Og det er blitt et utrolig sånn stilfull og flott restaurant. Så får du mat som jeg vil på en måte si er, den er vellaget, gjennomtenkt og nett på da. En av signaturrettene våre på Code er jo Lobster Roll. Lobster Roll er noe jeg på en måte har kjempet for å få inn, for det var... Jeg var på Burger Lobster i London, og fikk en sånn roll, og du føler deg liksom litt sånn skamfull når du spiser. Det er liksom det følelsen jeg vil gjerne gi til gjesten her også da. Så det er en rett som jeg på en måte aldri kommer til å ta av. Fjellrøten er jo en sånn rett som er, den ser litt sånn enkel ut, men så ble den bare litt sånn genial. Det er jo syltet knutekål, litt tårtsja fisk, en god grønn chili-dressing, og litt tapioca. Det er jo egentlig det der. Den har bare blitt så sinnssykt bra, og folk har tatt den veldig, veldig godt imot. Jeg tror kanskje det er de der små apelsinsegmentene, og det er hint av fersk estragon da. Cavatelli, brissel og trøffel. Alt dette er jo en sånn deilig kombinasjon, for du har den sprøde brisselen, du har en sånn soft digg pasta og en digg creamy saus, og litt sånn der tartofi nero på toppen der. Det blir jo perfekt. Krepsusett er jo egentlig en sånn superklassisk greie, som du egentlig ikke skal tulle så mye med da. Men vi valgte å gjøre en litt annen vip på det. Vi lager liksom pannekakene på forhånd, en sånn god, sånn karamellisert kompott. Så blir den flambert i panne. Men jeg føler at du får en mer, så du får liksom litt sånn sprø pannekake fullt med sånn godt varmt eplefyll og en digg i soppå. Jeg føler at det er en oppgradering da. 